thanks so much for joining me here today as we get to talk about one of my most favorite subjects, comic books. My name is Jose. I love comic books. I love talking about them. I love sharing them with you. Um, you can follow me on social media. Uh, I have links in the description below. I just like to post my artwork. That's about it. We're going to be looking at Alien's Hive. Now, we're not really going to concern ourselves with the story. We're going to look at Kelly Jones' beautiful art. This is from 1992, I believe is when it was. I know it says 91 here, but I believe it 1992 is when it was published. Um, and we are just going to be looking at Kelly Jones's beautiful art. Um, a lot of this, these things don't exist anymore um, because uh, Marvel or Disney have um, decided, you know, what is canon and what is not. So um, some of this stuff doesn't really matter anyway so we are just going to be looking at kelly jones's beautiful art uh most of you are familiar with kelly jones's run on batman with doug munch um he's also done a few he also did a few issues of the sandman with neil gaiman i have his artist edition for the batman which i recommend for everyone to get i have the original series I don't have the Marvel release or re-release of them, but I do have the original issues. Everything I show you is based on stuff that I actually own. I don't show you anything that I do not have. So if I don't have it, I don't show it to you. I like to use digital because digital is so much easier to... Um, He's playing fetch with the dog. Um, it's so much easier to show you. So. So it seems to be that this alien here is under his command. So. But look at Kelly Jones's art is very cool i like him him if you look at his batman and you look at his batman sketches ah uh, just very cool um he has a very um different style i mean i know everybody does but he, he's one of those that is difficult to pin down you can see it's a little bit of bernie wrightson it's a little bit of you know but he is one of those artists that is completely um, on his own category. Um, he doesn't have a lot of people that you can sort of compare. Like, for example, um, David Finch and Mark Silvestri, um, Ed Bennis and Jim Lee. Um, you know, there's, there's certain people that kind of fit into a category... Um, Brian Bolin, for example, and Ethan Van Skyver are very similar in style, uh, but you don't see very many of them like that. Um, but Kelly Jones, like I said, is one of those that seems to be in his own. Um, and before anybody says that, uh, Ethan Van Skyver and Brian Bolin don't draw the same. Look at their art and uh, put it uh, next to each other. And they're very similar. I, didn't, I don't mean that they're exactly the same. I'm just saying that Ethan Van Skyver's art is very similar to Brian Boland's art. Um, same as if you take a look at Mike Deodato. Um, when he started, he was more Jim Lee-ish. Not anymore. He's... he's uh, Changed a, a little bit, so. So, I'm going to go ahead and this concludes this issue here. So, issue two. So, in the comparison of style, so for example, if you look at Andy and Adam Kubert, and you look at when they first came out and they started drawing. They started drawing uh, 
really during that Jim Lee era. And if you take a look at Andy and Adam Kubert when they were doing X-Men and Wolverine back in the day, I mean, got to go to the 90s, they were essentially Jim Lee clones. Now, their art has evolved, of course, but um, the... Uh, the styles were very similar, but I don't know whether that was because they were told um, draw like Jim Lee. But the Adam Kubert has a change. His, Adam Kubert actually has gone more like his dad nowadays. So, another person that is, I find to be in a. Uh, like Kelly Jones, kind of in its own bucket. If you're familiar with the Italian artist Andrea Sorrentino, Andrea is v in his own. Nobody draws like Sorrentino. Um, and part of what makes it so different is just how he renders all the blacks that he adds to this. So I know if you're watching this, you're probably going, when does he kill the dog? So, um, so far, he likes the dog, so. But, uh. So. <laughs> oh, so cool. So there's one that's drawn by Mike Mignola, and there's one that's drawn by John Byrne, and I hope to also share those with you. But enough about other artists. We're going to concentrate here on uh, Kelly Jones. Um, Kelly Jones really, I, dis I discovered him when he was doing the covers during the Batman Night Fall era. I saw those covers and just found them so, so cool. Um, and so that's where I discovered him. So I think this is the queen based on the. Look at beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So it's only a four issue limited series, so we only have two issues to go. So like I said, I'm not concerning myself with this with the actual story. I got these um, not off the rack. I got these after, and they weren't very much. Um, I don't. I don't even know if they're that um, hard for you to go on eBay and get them. But if you like Kelly Jones or you like um, this type of stuff, um, strongly recommend. Kelly Jones is, like I said, he's he draws very well. Um, very different. Um, and I really recommend his Batman run. Just don't see very much of his work and his rendering. Kelly Jones' rendering of um, light and dark is part of what he likes. I tried, so when I was, uh, during one of my phases, I really try to incorporate, see how he does some of these standalone shadows right here? I tried doing that, but um, 
I ended up being more of John Cassidy. So if you're familiar with John Cassidy's work, I try to use some of that charcoal rendering now on my art. But some of my older pieces, you'll see this, like this. I, I, I was doing a lot of that. The thing that I'm learning, and you know, <clears throat> I I draw as a hobby. Oh, the poor dog. I draw as a hobby. Um, and uh, I, I'm always learning. I'm always taking stuff, but I didn't really start drawing too bad till I was in. Even though I always drew when I was younger. I didn't really become serious about it till um, I was in my early 40s. So <clears throat> my art just keeps evolving um, as I as I look at different artists. I try to emulate certain things. And John Cassidy, I think, and Matt, you know, that Matt Wagner, John Cassidy, how they render with... Uh, um, charcoal is something that I've sort of started incorporating. Very cool. Cool art. Honestly, I don't even know what's going on <laughs> in the, uh, as far as the story goes, I couldn't tell you. I've never read it. I've had this, I've had this series for years and years and years, but I've never read it. And I'm sure a lot of you probably have comic books you have bought that you haven't really read and part of the only reason I got this is for Kelly Jones's art. I didn't really get this because I really cared about, you know, aliens. Although I do like aliens and alien, you know, that's uh Prometheus, all that franchise. I do like it. But it wasn't the main reason for me getting this. I got this because of Kelly Jones. Like I said, I got John Byrne and I've got uh, Mike Mignola. So, one more issue to go. Very cool. It's just Kelly Jones, I tell you. He doesn't have a lot of internal work. A lot of what he has is... Um, covers, a lot of covers, a lot of pinups, but when you look at the insides of a book, he doesn't have too many. Um, so he's been around for, for decades, but he hasn't done too much of the, uh, interiors. So I think this guy's a robot like, uh, Bishop was in Aliens or... I forgot his his name on the was it Hal on the on the original alien You know and I know a lot of people love aliens with James that uh, James Cameron did but the first one what I love about it is it's a slow build. It seems boring, but I mean, I find it to be building into like a crescendo. Whereas Aliens by uh, James Cameron is more of your typical sci-fi um, action adventure. So although it builds, it just it goes on the action. That's really what drives the movie. Whereas the one Ridley Scott did on Alien... Um, that one's more of a, of a building into something, so. <clears throat> you know, I love artists, so many different ones, and I, I find so much, um, inspiration from so many different artists, and Kelly Jones is one, um, Again, because I like Batman so much, and he was so instrumental during the 
'90s with those covers, and then he had the he had about a 25 issue run where he did the interiors. Um, Alex Maleev, I like, and Terrell Sorrentino, all these different artists that are not your typical clean Jim Lee uh, style, Mark Silvestri, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's just cool to, to uh, see all these different ones. If you find the uh, <clears throat> the uh, Batman one that he um, the artist edition artifact edition maybe um, go grab that because I, I, it's beautiful. He only did the pencils though he did not ink it, but that doesn't make it any less. Um, any less beautiful. Although I think he is better when he uh, inks himself. And so something's up with this ant. So this ant is probably um, I wonder what it was. But anyway, so Hive 1 through 4 uh, from 1992 uh, drawn by Kelly Jones. Like and subscribe. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.